Chapter 693 A Great Shame Kumogakure had been experiencing a strange day. When the people in the village woke up, they saw a massive barrier surrounding the village and every single ninja in the village was ordered to be alert. A few hours later, Darui led a huge army outside the village. The people wanted to hear from their Raikage, but he was nowhere to be found. And now, a couple of thousand ninjas had placed the Raikage's building under siege. It immediately caused panic among the common people and even some ninjas. Discussions immediately broke out. Why have they sieged the Raikage building? Do you think those ninjas are committing mutiny? No way. As if those ninjas have any chance against Raikage-sama. Is there an enemy inside the village? But how could they have infiltrated into the Raikage building? Have the other villages declared war on us? Will the fourth great ninja war break out soon? Window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag, window pub future tag dot push, unit 648C3C50B32703F92E2, ID PF-463D-1. The people in Kumogakure immediately started making conspiracy theories. After all, there was nothing people loved more than gossiping. Of course, the spies in the village also took, took note of it. They were very curious about what was happening. They wanted to go closer to take a better look, but didn't dare to do so in case it was a trap. Around the Raikage building, hundreds of Kumo ninjas, along with people in power like Mabui, Inazuma, Nanako, and the council members, looked at the building to see an unfamiliar figure casually leaning against the window and looking down at them. Immediately several discussions broke out wondering what the identity of that person was. Mabui and the rest frowned as well. They had never seen or heard about anyone using such a disguise. Inazuma asked loudly, Who are you, and how did you inscribe so many seals on the building? As he spoke, he unleashed his bloodlust, displaying his seriousness. However, he didn't get any reaction from Fujin, who continued looking casually. He glanced at Inazuma and thought, so he is the elder who served as an advisor to the third Raikage and continues to serve an important role in their council. From what Shikaku said, he was one of the main planners behind the Hyuga incident. Unfortunately, he is well past his prime to be much fun right now. Being ignored so casually was embarrassing for Inazuma. However, there wasn't even a hint of embarrassment on his face. Just like the elders in Konoha, he had long mastered the Tao of shamelessness. Such a casual insult didn't even increase his heartbeat. Mabui followed up, Who are you? And what do you want? Finally, Fujin sighed and asked softly, What are you doing? Your headquarters is taken over by someone, and you are just standing outside obediently? He let out another long sigh and muttered, Those brats scammed me. Fujin's response left the Kumo ninjas too stunned to speak. Their eyes twitched as they wondered, What the hell? You've taken over our most important building and are disappointed that we haven't attacked yet? And then you complain about being scammed? What the fuck is he talking about? Even the experienced council members didn't know how to reply. Despite having experienced a lot, what they witnessed was undoubtedly the strangest situation they were ever a part of. Mabui became increasingly annoyed. She shouted, Bastard, what do you mean by scam? Stop messing around and answer our questions. To her surprise, Fujin actually answered her. That blondie with the kid called Durui said that the Raikagi in her village is very strong. She promised that he'd be able to kill me with ease. Unfortunately, I don't sense anyone strong among you. I'll give you four hours. Summon whoever that guy is and ask him to fight me. If you fail to do so, I shall wipe this village off the face of the planet. Of course, if you want to try and enter this building, be my guest. However, seeing your pitiful strength, I'd advise against doing so. With those words, Fujin left the window and walked inside, leaving a bunch of confused Kumo ninjas. The council members questioned in disbelief, did he just call Darui a kid? What does he mean by whoever that is? Does this lunatic not know who Raikage-sama is? Does he have a death wish? Why doesn't he just commit suicide instead of bothering us? He mentioned a blonde girl. Was he mentioning Yugito or Samui? Inazuma said, That isn't important. What's important is that he mentioned Darui. Contact Darui immediately and get this guy's information. Then contact Raikage-sama and inform him of this situation. Nanako, continue inspecting the seals on the building and check whether it's safe to enter inside. 
Even though this situation is terrible, there is one silver lining. He said that he didn't intend to attack for four hours. We can take this time to evaluate our options. We could even wait for Darui's group to return. We still don't know where Raikage-sama is, but he could wait to. He was harshly cut off by Inazuma, who shouted, Don't forget what this building is. All our documents are inside the building. There is no way we can wait for hours without doing anything. His words might just be a ruse to scare us and buy him some time to do what he wants. So don't lower your guard. Not to mention, our reputation will be dragged through the mud once this matter leaks. Imagine what every other village would think if they knew that 2,000 Kumagakure ninjas waited outside for hours while a single ninja took control of the Raikage building. The expressions of everyone nearby became ugly. Nanako quickly got to work while Mabui reorganized the communication team and contacted Darui's group. In the middle of a forest fire, close to 400 ninjas were waiting anxiously for the return of their leaders. Suddenly, one of the ninjas, tasked with communication, began receiving a message. He quickly rushed to an elite junin and informed, Lady Mabui wants to talk to Darui-sama. The elite junin frowned and said, inform her that he's still in battle. However, he immediately received a reply. She said that this is of the highest priority. The village is facing grave danger. The elite Junin frowned. He was one of the two who fought against Fujin. He didn't want to leave the barrier until Darui and the rest returned. The elite Junin next to him said, Our censors said that the fighting stopped a few minutes ago, so either that freak is dead or he's planning another fucked up move. Regardless, it should be safe temporarily. I'll take him along with me and meet up with them. You stay back in the barrier and ensure that it stays safe. The other guy nodded and said, Be careful. The elite Junin and the communication ninja left the barrier and rushed towards Darui's group. Inside the Raikage's building, Fujin's shadow clones were working at full speed. Dozens of shadow clones rummaged through the scrolls and files inside the building. They intended to look through as many scrolls as they could. Of course, many scrolls in the building were traps set for anyone attempting to steal them. Fujin knew that from Dodai's memories, which is why he didn't look personally for them and instead left everything to his clones. In addition, even though Dodai didn't know the most important things like the location of the scroll containing the secrets of the Lightning Chakra Mode and the location of Kohaku no Johei, he knew some other important things. The first shadow clone that Fujin created inside the building flickered to one important scroll from Dodai's memories. He quickly found it and opened it. As he read through the contents, a smile appeared behind his mask. The clone thought, even though this isn't the real lightning chakra mode, this scroll contains the third Raikage's notes from when he was creating this jutsu. It also contains the basics of black lightning. With these, I might be able to replicate those techniques by myself, even if I don't find the final scrolls. The only drawback is that year, Tide need to spend several months or perhaps even a few years to replicate them. Then again, it isn't entirely bad. After all, the process of creating a new jutsu is extremely beneficial for any ninja. During that period, a ninja's creativity is at its peak. Just like how I got the ideas for this battlefield while I was working on the Fuin battlefield, heh, <laughs> I wonder if the Kumo ninjas will step into this building. At the same time, another clone went into the underground. Just like Konoha, Kumogakure's Anbu headquarters was just under their Kage's building. They had emptied the base since the seals had spread through it as well. However, Fujin's clone had no interest in the Anbu ninjas. Instead, he moved towards some storage rooms, removed the seals on them, and opened them. A wide smile appeared on his face. Had Hiruzen seen that smile, he'd definitely recall a few unpleasant memories. An, if you can, then please support me on Patreon. Link in not patreon.com slash devilhex, no space. Alternatively, you can support me on UPI, Google Pay. Paddle Sarvet can read up to 50 chapters ahead on Patreon. Thank you, Nathan, ScarITG12, The Last Garden, Cooling Cloud, David, Light PvP, Ike, and Timothy for supporting me on Patreon. Chapter 694, The Most Generous Village. After opening the storage room underneath the Raikage building, a wide smile appeared on Fujin's clone's face. 
Had Hiruzen seen that smile, he'd shiver and recall a few unpleasant memories. It was the smile Fujin had whenever he extorted elemental crystals from him. In front of the clone's eyes was a storage room filled with lightning crystals. In a matter of seconds, the entire room became empty as all the crystals went into the storage scrolls Fujin's main body had arranged. Of course, it wasn't the only storage room. There were four more storage rooms. Two of them were filled with lightning crystals, just like the one which the clone had just plundered. The last two had the remaining four elemental crystals. Fujin's clone emptied all five storage rooms. He calculated that he had taken 4,369 lightning crystals, 822 fire crystals, 764 water crystals, 712 wind crystals, and 484 earth crystals. It was a massive loot. Fujin never expected Kumogakure and I to be so generous. Fujin's clone thought, I have to admit, the people in Kumo are undoubtedly the most generous folks. As soon as I arrived, all of them obediently left the building and let me take whatever I wanted in any quantity. Even Konoha has never been so generous towards me. Jokes aside, these shouldn't be all elemental crystals Kumo has. A. Should still have quite a few stored in storage scrolls, while other factions in Kumo should have some too. Regardless, this will be a big loss. According to my calculations, these should be over half of the elemental crystals Kumo has. I wish I could see A's reaction when he realizes that these storage rooms are empty. <laughs> Meanwhile, his remaining clones were going through the remaining scrolls, looking for any techniques available in the building. They also came across several trap scrolls, but it wasn't too difficult for Fujin's clones to identify the traps before they opened the scrolls. In the end, not even a single trap was triggered. The elite Junin and the communication ninja ran through the burning forest and reached Darui's group. Both were shocked to see the injuries on everyone's bodies. Darui looked at them and asked, Why are you here? The elite Junin quickly replied, There is an issue in the village. Mabui wants to talk with you immediately. The other ninja quickly handed the chakra transmission communication device to Darui. He put it on and asked, Mabui, can you hear me? Window.pubfuturetag or pubfuturetag. Window.pubfuturetag.push. Unit 648C3 have 6 or be 3 3 f 9 2 I'd PF 46301. His eyes widened and his pupils dilated as he heard Mabui's question. Darui, do you know any ninja who wears a long black cloak and a demon mask? He asked in disbelief. How did you know? Mabui replied, So, you know who he is. Quickly give me all the information regarding him. We're in a mess, Darui quickly said. Hold up, Mabui. Please tell me how you know about him. What's the situation in the village? Mabui answered. He showed up a few minutes ago and has taken over the Raikaje building. Somehow, he managed to place thousands of seals on the buildings under our noses and is keeping all of us out. He said that a blonde girl with you told him that Raikage-sama could kill him and has given us four hours to summon him. Otherwise, he threatened to destroy our village. To say Darui was shocked was an understatement. He couldn't understand how Fujin could make a move against their village so quickly, as it had only been a few minutes since their fight ended. All the ninjas around him noticed his expression and promptly inquired what was happening. Darui barely managed to reply. Akuro, he has attacked our village and has occupied the Raikage building. The eyes of Si, Samui, Yugito, and Jin widened in shock. All of them were stunned. Jin was the one to recover his thoughts quickest, and said, The place he reverse summoned to must be closer to our village. No, the village is protected by a barrier. It means that he had a way to reverse summon himself inside the e village. He must have an accomplice inside the village. Everyone nodded. Mabui shouted in frustration, Stop discussing among yourself and tell us who this lunatic is. We're planning to make a move against him soon. Darui immediately shouted back, no, wait. Don't act rashly. He quickly informed Mabui about their encounter with Fujin and reported everything that had happened. As she heard, Mabui's eyes kept widening and her expression kept becoming grimmer. It was noticed by everyone around her. She muttered in disbelief. He took on the entire army by himself, killed dozens of our ninjas, and injured all five of you before coming here within a few minutes? Mabui had a hard time believing what she heard. However, she knew Darui wouldn't joke at such a critical time. 
The ones around her were equally shocked. The one who had the ugliest expression was none other than Inazuma. Due to his experience, he could see the larger picture and immediately understood how terrible the situation was for them. Darui said, We'll make our way back to the village immediately. Even though we're injured, Yugito, see, Samui and I can still fight. We can reach the village within three hours, faster if we travel on two tails, and then fight him. Even though he said those words, Darui didn't have much confidence. Their wounds would worsen if left untreated. He couldn't be sure how much fighting capabilities he'd have after such a long trip. The only one who might be able to fight was Yugito. However, he had seen how terrible the enemy's battle tactics were. He knew that hundreds, possibly thousands, of Kumo ninjas could end up losing their lives if he repeated the same tactics inside the village. As for the civilian casualty, he didn't even dare to estimate it. Mabui replied, No, take care of your wounds first. I'll contact Raikage-sama and check where he has reached. Darui replied, All right, keep me updated. Mabui quickly contacted A's group and asked for the chakra transmission communication device to be given to Ai. She quickly informed him about the events related to Akuro. A's expression was a sight to see. When he left the village to hunt Fujin down, he never imagined that the village would become such a mess. Despite his stubborn nature, he couldn't help but regret his decision to go after Fujin, even after knowing that it could be a trap. He said, even though Darui said that his chakra reserves must have fallen low and that he retreated, Akuro must have confidence in himself to openly attack us. Be careful, and don't do anything hastily. I'll make my way to the village within four hours. Tell Darui to stay put. With those injuries, he'll just be in the way. Mabui sighed in relief and replied. All right, Raikage-sama. Seeing that I had stopped speaking and his grim face, B asked, What do you mean return within four hours? We're at least ten hours from the village if we continue moving at this speed. A lightning cloak suddenly appeared around A, as he said, The village is a mess. I'm heading ahead. B, come with me. The rest of you follow our original plan. Inspect the five bases, but be careful and don't trigger any traps. You've already heard from Jin how well hidden the traps are. So, take every precaution and give your safety the highest priority. The six Kumo elite Junins nodded. A red chakra cloak appeared around B as he and I left the others behind. B said seriously, Brother, you can't sustain your chakra long enough to run all the way to the village in this manner. What is happening in the village? A replied, don't worry, I'm well aware. I'll slow down at times to conserve my chakra. As for the village, I informed him about Akuro's actions. In the village, Mabui said, Raikage-sama said that he'll return to the village within four hours. We'll be safe. Everyone around her sighed in relief. After hearing what he had done against Darui, none of them wanted to confront Akuro. Everything they heard about Akuro was bad news. Be it his disgusting fighting tactic, his terrifying strength, or his jutsu leaving wounds that couldn't be healed. Needless to say, what horrified them the most was the possibility that Akuro might know the lightning chakra mode. They knew very well how overwhelming and mighty that technique was and wanted nothing to do with him, even if he was low on chakra. If they could stay outside for a few hours without fighting, they'd be glad. They just prayed that their enemy wouldn't suddenly change his mind and attack them before Ai returned. However, there was one exception. Inazuma said in a grim tone, No, we can't wait for the fourth to return. We have to make a move. If you can, then please support me on Patreon. Link. Patreon.com slash devilhex. No space. Alternatively, you can support me on UPI, Google Pay, Patil Sarvish 8 at OKSB. Can read up to 50 chapters ahead on Patreon. Thank you Quarky, Cory, Osman, and Zypherus for supporting me on Patreon. Chapter 695, Devil's Playground. Inazuma said in a grim tone, No, we can't wait for the fourth to return. We have to make a move. A look of surprise appeared on the council members around him. No one expected him to keep insisting on his original idea. Mabui said, We don't have any rank S ninjas inside the village to take him on. If we try, a lot of our ninjas will lose their lives pointlessly. Not to mention, we could even irk him and change his mind about waiting for four hours. Inazuma shook his head and replied, Death is better than living without any dignity. 
the morale of our ninjas will drop to rock bottom if we don't even show the will to fight against someone who has taken over our headquarters. Our enemies will be emboldened as well. Once the next great war breaks out, we'll suffer heavily due to this. Even though he said so, others weren't convinced. One of the council members said, We've already lost a lot of ninjas. Don't forget that Darui's army suffered heavily against him. If we lose any more ninjas, this might become another incident like the one in the Land of Hot Water. We can't take responsibility for such losses. Mabui became even more depressed after hearing her words. The remaining council members were still unaware that everyone in six bases was missing or that Darui's army had already suffered much damage due to the trap. Only she knew that this incident was already several times worse. Inazuma sighed and said, As I said, there's no other choice. What do you think everyone will think if none of the over 10,000 ninjas in the village dared to make a move against someone who challenged and insulted our entire village? I will take responsibility for this. Once Akuro is dealt with, I'll accept the blame for any deaths until the fourth returns and resign from the council. Everyone's expression became solemn. Inazuma had been the oldest and longest-serving member on the Kumogakure Council. He also held the most influence after I and was usually the one to tone down Ai's aggression. None of them expected him to make such a sacrifice. Inazuma turned his gaze towards the window where Fujin was standing earlier and said, Besides, don't take everything at face value. Dari said that Akuro's chakra reserves might have dropped low. Perhaps these four hours are just for him to recover his chakra. Window.pubfuturetag equals window.pubfuturetag. Window.pubfuturetag.push648C36503D73F92E2PF463-1. I'm not sure where the fourth is, but if he's too far away and has to use the lightning chakra mode to return quickly to the village, then he'll be very exhausted by the time he returns. He might be at a disadvantage against a fully rested Akuro. If he falls or is seriously injured like Jin, then our village will be in grave danger. In addition, all our official documents are in the building as well. He may say that he's from an ancient era, but if that is a lie and he is from one of the other villages, then he will take this opportunity to get all our secrets. I don't need to tell you guys what the consequences would be if those secrets leaked. Everyone followed Inazuma's gaze with an ugly expression. In truth, they knew this in their hearts as well. However, none of them wanted to accept it as the cost would be too heavy. Since Inazuma took initiative and responsibility, no one could oppose him. Under Inazuma's orders, the Kumo ninjas immediately got into action while Mabui informed Darui about A's orders. Inside the building, Fujin was inside the Raikage's office when a couple of clones teleported next to him. They handed him a couple of scrolls and dispelled themselves to transfer the memories to him. A smile appeared on Fujin's face as he looked at the scrolls and thought, Good, everything in that scroll is copied in this one. And this scroll has all the elemental crystals. What a good loot. I can finally use lightning crystals to improve my lightning affinity a bit. The rest aren't particularly useful for me. However, it can be very useful for the Phantom Ha, Ven. That said, I can't give this as easily as money. After all, I can't steal these as easily as money. Fujin thought for a couple of minutes before deciding, even though these seem plenty, they'll run out in no time if everyone in Phantom Haven begins using them liberally. It wouldn't have much effect either. The best way of using them is to keep them with me and secretly give them to the ones who show exceptional talent. As of right now, only Karen and Ranmaru have displayed such talent. If I consider just the two of them, then these crystals will be more than enough, especially considering that neither needs to focus much on nature manipulation. All right, I'll do this. If I eventually run low on them, I'll try to see if any other village is feeling generous. Fujin stored the scrolls and created two new shadow clones to join the rest. Fujin had a lot of plans regarding his Akuro identity. The reason why he created an aura of an ancient expert around Akuro was due to those plans. It would allow Fujin to break loose without worrying about the consequences of his actions. So, even though he wanted the jutsus from Kumogakure, he didn't want to give up the aura he had created around Akuro. Hence, instead of just stealing the scrolls, 
his clones copied down all the important details into his scrolls and handed them to Fujin once they were done. All the original scrolls were placed back into their original spots, ensuring that Kumogakure wouldn't suspect that their techniques had been copied. This was also the reason why Fujin gave the impression that Akuro could use the lightning chakra mode. Darui and I wouldn't suspect him of having stolen this technique since they'd believe that he already knew that technique. Half an hour passed as Fujin's clones continued working diligently while Fujin sat in the Raikage's office and recovered his chakra. Suddenly, his eyes snapped open and he glanced outside the window. A smile appeared on his face as he thought, Would you look at that? I guess they have some courage after all. It would have been disappointing otherwise. To lose the most important and iconic building in your village should have boiled the blood of several hot-headed fellows. A massive barrier had appeared outside the Raikage building and completely encased it. The strength of the barrier was the same as the one surrounding the village. Outside the barrier, Inazuma, Mabui, Nanako, and the council members stood with serious expressions. Nanako said, The seals are quite remarkable. The first remarkable thing is that someone was able to keep these seals hidden on the building. Even if I assume that a high-level seal master or a grandmaster was a traitor, this is still very impressive. What is even more impressive is that the seals form an intricate network, complementing each other perfectly. It's almost like the battlefields the Uchiha and Uzumaki clans could construct, but this is far more sophisticated. Are you sure you still want to proceed? I have a bad feeling about this. Inazuma nodded and said, I am. However, it depends on whether you can find any vulnerabilities in the seal network or not. So, did you? Nanako answered, I'm not sure if it is a vulnerability, but I found eight pathways into the building. Unlike the battlefields which were completely closed off, this seems more like a lair to lure prey inside. I believe that he has traps inside to deal with the intruders. Inazuma frowned and asked, What if we don't take the pathways and create a new opening? Nanako answered, As I said earlier, the seals are interconnected. Any attack will be distributed along the entire network. We could destroy it with enough attacks, but that would cause the building to collapse as well. In addition, there are several explosive seals in the seal network. They'll be triggered, and everything inside the building will be destroyed. Except Akuro, of course. I doubt he'd be foolish enough to leave himself vulnerable. Inazuma immediately rejected that option. Ever since Kumogakure was established, there had never ar been an instance where the Raikage building had fallen. He didn't intend to be the one to do it. Not to mention, the loss of all the important documents would create a lot of work, and he knew that I would give that task to him since he'd take the responsibility. Inazuma sighed and said, This is even more dangerous than I imagined. Summon the ninjas who can use elemental clones. Send eight clones through each pathway. Nanako, you send a couple as well. Keep a close eye on the seals inside the building and improve your understanding of this seal network. Mabui, instruct the sensors to begin their task. Nanako and Mabui nodded. Within a few minutes, a few gaps opened up in the barrier as 64 clones entered inside. At the same time, several sensors activated their chakra field, covering the entire village. Fujin realized Kumogakure's intentions but didn't even pay any attention to it. Instead, a wide smile appeared behind his mask as he thought, Good. Let me see how good my third battlefield technique is. Welcome to the Devil's Playground. If you can, then please support me on Patreon. Link. Patreon.com. Devil Hex. No space. Alternatively, you can support me on UPI, Google Pay, Patil Sarvshate at OKS Buy. Can read up to 50 chapters ahead on Patreon. Thank you, Tristan, Bernard, Ethan, Pablo, and Fun Yoga for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you, TE, for supporting me through UPI.